shoot, I'm not muted. How long have I not been muted? I feel like I've probably said some stupid things while I was preparing. Well, anything you've heard over the last three minutes didn't happen. Music left. I've heard the music start working. No, it is okay. Hello everyone, how bullshit. Just my microphone falling apart just a second. E there we go, hi. Now it doesn't seem like my music's working. Let's fix that. Where is it? There it is. So, um, how are you all doing today? I've still got a little bit of setup stuff I need to do because I forgot to do some things beforehand because I am a stupid, big, big stupid. Oh my god. But yeah, uh, we're back in programming today. And I'm just, well, it's not really programming anymore, actually. I'm just sort of uh, b building the actual world for the game now. Yeah, I've got some notes here and I'm going to be just like um, drawing out the world well drawing out the variables required to make the actual world and it's gonna be awesome it's also gonna be a long tedious process that I'm not looking forward to but you know um, every game is part of every game's development cycle to have the world actually built So, uh, how's everyone doing today? I think I already said that, but I'm saying it again because I'm stalling while I get some stuff set up my end.
is everything still everything seems to still be working my face hasn't exploded at all which is always a good sign it's been done yet no it's not these Actually, you know what? I can just sort of jump into this. There it is. The game. I really hope it's capturing properly. Oh, hold on. My face isn't here. Of course it's not. Uh, camera. Oh, there I am. There's a little old me. I will just actually delete this and copy in the one from the other scene. Then, boop. Do we have chat here? I think that's the wrong chat, but oh well. Now, here is the grand thing. It's a big old room. Hold on, my freaking shit just crashed. On my the freaking Twitch on my phone just crashed. That's never good. Anyway, yeah, this is if this is what we're doing today. A quick show around what's here so far. It's this. I added a sort of distance fog effect. That is, <clears throat> that, yeah. There's this big old room. I already. I feel like I've repeated myself already. Did the fog? That's a nice new thing. I've actually started texturing everything in. Hopefully, finalised versions. We have a bit of the heads-up display, and we've got this little bit of a corridor. It's all very pleasant, but there is a lot more to go. We do now need to make another. Oh yeah, I need to figure out where these corners are. Which means I have a lot of calculatoring to do. Because I've got to make sure something goes across here. How do I do this? It is Yeah, okay, I'm just gonna give you that scene for a moment while I just Google something. Really hope that worked. Oh boy, no, it isn't working. Hello. Great, the hotkey stopped working. Oh no, they're just both the same thing. Hold on, that's not right. Oh, right, because, yeah, okay, I'm an idiot. That's why. So, I need to do a big old research for how I... the, the, the matrix I've got to use for calculating this. Cos theta, sine theta, negative sine theta, cos theta, okay. Yep, that makes sense. So basically we've got to make a new boundary object, which is the walls. The X1 is going to be 
the corner, one of the corners of this here, which will be at its midpoint. And then with a little, well not the midpoint, the midpoint distance from it then times by a matrix that we've got to work out. Which is 2 by 2. And the rotation on this object is um, 60 degrees. So uh, cos 60. Wait well, no, because that goes, it's negative cos 60. Negative cos 60. What do you mean incorrect syntax? Oh, I used the word negative and then sine 6. No, it's sine negative 60. But it doesn't. Hi, welcome to A level math student. Forget how to do maths. Did I get that right? Cos sign negative sign cos. Okay, I did. Cool. Shit. Uh, now we just do the center of the original place, which is six four hundred. Where is it? Yeah, six four hundred one one fifty. Plus um, both of its widths over two times by that matrix. What do you mean I mentioned mismatch? I did them the wrong way around. Okay, so one of these I have position six one nine five got to have very specifics and then Z1 is 1854 no 45.513 and then we'll just put it so it goes to 0 0 and then texture graveled and then height 50 base negative 100 that is it delete that save refresh the page now if i've done this correctly that one of the edges of that should be right on the corner of well, one of these corners yes it's there okay nice that means i did this correction correctly correct i did the calculation correctly Now I just do the same thing but with negative Z. So we change it. I have I have this whole thing on my calculator, I just gotta change variables. So we change it so the Z is in the negative direction, so it's negative five two five. Boop. Now we have Um, seven seven one oh four point six six three and one three two zero point five one three. Refresh this. Please be right. It's right. Look at that. 
now we just actually have to bring these walls down a little. Ooh, a fly. Fuck off. I am going to spill this drink if I don't drink it. There. Hmm. Now, thankfully I've been labelling these because I'm smart. Let me just change this to... Oh shit, wrong button. There we go, now they will be at the level for the next thing. Basically this, is, this first corridor here is going to be a bit of a sort of spirals down-ish thing. Like it spirals down then goes underneath itself so it's got to have a lot of drop down bits like this. Now we just fudge in a new floor. Which one? Um, actually, let's make this 5,000. No, 500. 5,000 is a lot. Uh, 500. Width 2 will be 1200, then the X will be that corner there, wait no there's no corner there this time, uh, it'll be it'll be somewhere between the previous, va the values we had for the other thing. Skylar, yo, welcome. Welcome to the stream where I'm tediously calculating and putting in numbers to draw a map. I'm at that stage of my game's development and I don't have any proper develop proper world creating tools, so I'm having to write the values for each of these. Anyway, sorry, no. I'm not here to rant, I'm here to make good content. Welcome to the stream, how are you today? Also working on your game? That is epic. Six, 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 four, nine, six, six, fifty. We'll round that too. And then the next one is one eight four five plus no one eight four five plus one three twenty divided by two uh, one thousand five hundred and eighty. Oh, and then oh no, that's its that's its y coordinate. That needs to be negative a hundred. And then its rotation. Let's say forty-five degrees. Texture graveled. Don't know how to use game testing screen in Unity. I have never used Unity, so I can't help you there, but good luck with that. Now, another wall in place. Does it look good? Let's find out. I think I might have got something slightly wrong here. Hold on, wait. With oh no, I am just an idiot. Okay, hold on. Uh, width one needs to be something a bit bigger. I just want to add a new one in for testing. New floor. Uh, 
500, 500, no, that's the wrong thing. This needs to be like 10,000, 10,000, and then X of. And screw it. Oh, you figured it out? Well done. Why is this not loading? The fuck do you mean? Oh, I missed a comma. Yeah, because if I, I gotta make sure I don't make these bits too sort of like short the steps, otherwise you won't be able to walk up them because you'll be colliding with that wall and the game will be like, oh that's too close, you'd have to break physics to go there, so I've got to make sure you can hop up like this properly. Anyway, now I just need to do this again and I can move that away from the edge because that's just inefficient with the resources. Let's see what. Actually, no, wait, I was just saying that's like the right width, and I just then fucking ignored my own thing I said. Well, I would like to move it a little bit out, maybe. Just add a hundred on each axis. I forgot what number that was before. And then a hundred on this axis. Now we work out where the corners of that are. So we just. Quickly make sure it's not hanging over too far that way. No, it's not okay, that's pretty good. Actually, no, that is terrible. Unity makes map building easy. That is very lucky for you. I'm building my game in JavaScript where I basically had to build all the parts of an engine just around graph my own uh, a graphics library and basic logic. Now I've lost where I am. But yeah, I kind of overlooked making a map builder for the sake of this project, which was a mistake. But you know, this is just a uh, just my um, A level coursework. It, I'm literally, I'm probably never going to touch this after the end of the year when it's due in. <laughs> Oh, that is very much not going to the wall. Okay, shift that over on the x-axis. Love the graphics? Thank you, I put one Google search into getting them. <laughs> Actually, the, the the all the UI elements I've built myself. The, kind of. Yeah, this is graphically inspired by, like, the old games, like... Actually, I'll say specifically, it's the, it's the first two Elder Scrolls games graphically. But, like, I'm taking inspiration from that whole series, the, the best mechanics from it, and getting rid of the worst parts. Inspired by the 90s? Yeah, pretty much that.
purple pixel art. Thanks. Okay. The only real art that needs to be done for this is my. Uh, hang on. Sprite sheets for enemies and stuff. Uh, they have a lot of specific parts that need to go into it. If I can find it, there's an. Im this is just a. Actually, no. Actually, yeah, this is a good enough example. No, it's not because it's missing the attacks and stuff. This is a very dated example for me. Uh, Chibi throw. There we go. That. There's very. How do I zoom out? There we go. Very set things that have to go into my sprite sheets. You have to have the idle sprites, then the walking sprites, then the damage sprites, then the dying animation, then the attacks. So that I've got one of my friends to do very kindly. Other than that, everything's like grabbing an image from Google or like, I think that how I've done the weapons is get a 3D model, load it up in my, in the Windows 3D model viewer, and then uh, just screenshot it and erase the background. Kind of cheating, but again, I do not care. Now, I forgot what I was doing. I was testing this. Haven't made a lot of textures yet. <laughs> nice textures is used. Textures and actually building worlds are the two parts I always forget about in my games because, like, I enjoy making the mechanics for it. Then I'm like, oh, I actually have to design the game now. And then I lose focus with the project and just sort of stop. That's why I've liked making roguelikes in the past. Oh my god, I'm an idiot. I've been changing things wrong. I've got those two axes mixed up. Because everyone knows Z comes after X, not before it, as I seem to keep thinking. Is this correct? Finally, there we go. Now, over to the calculator. I've got to work out where the edges of these walls go. So we have I'm going to put these into my matrices. We have six thousand six hundred and one thousand six hundred, and then B is seven hundred and fifty. No, 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 no. Two by one, seven hundred and fifty. Whatever 750 divided by 2 is, 375, and then rotation is 45 degrees, so cos negative 45, sine negative 45, negative sine negative 45, cos negative 45, and now we just boop boop. Okay, now that I know the process, that was a lot quicker than the first time. I do just need somewhere to prop my calculator up though, so I can do it without having to look down. Okay, six, eight, six, five. Point one six five two three nine five point four nine five and then the other one matrix B is negative three seven five yes because we just changed the Z boom Seven three nine five point four nine five. 
Oh, hang on, I put it there, I can read it. 1865 point 165 165 yep texture graveled and it's a height of 50 and it starts at negative 150 new floor with a width one of uh, let's just go a little 500 and then a width 2 of I think these need to be a little wider so one 300 600 and negative 150 and it will need to be brought down as well, so rotation of 45 degrees and a texture that is gravel and squiggly brackets because that value is not going to be changed. Another test. I'm going to just up the player's speed again for this test because it's feeling slow. Also, we don't need that anymore. <laughs> How do I do the speed? Uh, let's make me go 50 centimeters per tick. No, it's centimeters per second. Woo! Maybe it is per tick. That is in the complete wrong place. What? What in the... Okay, that's definitely not right. Hang on, 7395? Oh, I missed a decimal point there. That still doesn't change the fact that everything is horrifically in the wrong place. Yeah, that's almost right in some ways, but what did I do wrong here? I feel like I got the translation matrix off. Six six hundred one six hundred. That's correct. I got the um, dimensions of the thing off. I was reading the wrong thing apparently. To be two fifty and six hundred. again of course 6352 3, 5, 2, 0.5 0.513 Point zero four one One 
And now this better be in the right place. Although they actually run so fast that you just, you, you run faster than you fall pretty much. <laughs> I will admit it works. Although because I think this is just it's just because I have my movement speed set way higher than it reasonably should be. You know, I think it's time to add more walls. Also these ones need to be stretched down again. Because I am an idiot. Also, uh, given that the player is 175 things tall, we still got quite a way to go. But I think it should all it sh we should get down far enough before we loop back under here. Actually, let's just account for how far these are probably going to go down. This one's going to just come straight across here, I think. So... Yeah, this is the first corridor. Hang on, six, eight, seven, five. Okay, that is this one. Three thousand... To um, seven thousand eight hundred and three thousand two hundred with a texture of stone. I'll add more variety at some point very soon. For the other side. Okay, tooltip, please go away. I know how to use my own uh, objects. And Z2 will be. Seven hundred, negative two hundred, no, eight hundred, negative three hundred. Because I haven't decided where the ceiling is going to be for some of this yet, which I probably should sooner rather than later. Now, what do you mean? What is the problem here, actually? Down read or render. I've just written a width. What? Hang on, where's the arrow? Mm, 
boundary dot render, okay. Can't we properties of undefined? Okay. It's gotta be one of these new two I've just added. One, two, three, four stone. One, two, three. Oh I missed stone, okay. And begin another test. I wildly underestimated how much the how 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 long these were. So this one Eight thousand eight hundred. This one. How many are they in the same place? On that axis, at least. Uh, if that's the axis, then yeah. But I don't think that's the axis. Oh no, it is. Okay. That seems more reasonable. Now this one needs to just come straight across, I think. Well, there's something in my eye. across so say 10,500 and Z2 will just make it the same texture, stone, height. Unexpected token, ah, oh, Mr. Comma. Maybe streaming this was a bad idea, but it's also giving me motivation to actually have to work on it since I'm live in front of people. Yeah, I, my concept of where the axes are is just completely messed up in this world where it's no longer using everything at right angles. Okay, so it needs to have a little decrease in the z-axis. Yep, that seems pretty solid. Now we just need uh, the midpoint between these corners here, which can be worked out pretty easy since we have their exact coordinates. Something that will actually have its corners be on those, and I don't know the angle between them. Um, new floor. Oh, 
Oh, it corrected itself. Well done, VS Code. Very impressive. Um, let's give it a width one of 600. With two of. Now, why did that last one have 2300? That seems a bit excessive. It is very excessive, jeez. Yeah, we can probably shorten that by a good large amount. Okay, this one's 600 and. What was it? 100 again should be a safe bet. X of. I think it's going to be at 30. So we'll need the comma at the end. So if it goes there, it is okay. Oh, I hear a sound. Irenegus, thank you for the follow. Welcome to the stream. How are you doing today? Okay, this one is going to be, and I can't see the values. Um, where is it? Seven, seven, two hundred and two, two hundred. Little chilling. That's good to hear. How am I? I am doing great because I am here with my cool audience, which includes you now. It's pretty much the only thing getting through this tedious task I've assigned myself to. What am I making this game in? I am making it in JavaScript. Yes, JavaScript, specifically using the P5 graphics library. Hang on, wait, no, this isn't, I just realised this is not right. That is a large gap that should not be there. So we can just punt that over a little bit and it should be good. And that should just be negative on the x-axis, which is here, 7,100. We're going to be doing a game dev this year, just too lazy. Yeah, I, I get that attitude. It can be hard to throw yourself into something as big as building a game. Might learn something. Even Unity. Yeah, you know, I guess for most people, Unity is probably one of the best options. I'm just doing this as like coursework for my A levels so I have to do it in this language. It'll take forever, yeah I know that's that's my biggest problem with this as well. Like I, I just I just can't 
I don't have the patience to see things through all the way to the end. A levels, uh, I don't know what the equivalent is in other countries. It's just like not B Tech or um, no, not what's a B Tech? No, no, it's just, like, yeah, A-level degree. Now this, did I already move over? I can't remember. It's equivalent to three A-levels? Oh, no, that is not what I'm doing. I'm just, just doing just one A-level worth of A-level for me, please. how because I'm I took an a-level computer science course at college well I'm taking one and yeah I'm taking uh, I'm in college doing an doing a computer science a-level course and this is my coursework for that course. Hang on, I think my... There we go. Where am I from? I am from England. Finally. Sorry for winging a lot. No, that's fine. Okay, so these are way sticking out, but I do not care at this point to optimize the planes. Anyway, now it's time for optimization. Come later, yeah. Basically, I just got to like shorten the width of the things. So this one we will be using. We've got to put in a floor. No, not a floor. A wall. And that will be at six. Then it'll break? No, it, it shouldn't break. Setting the coordinates. Set, yes, I am setting everything one by one because I overlooked making a map editor. Thankfully, I don't actually have to have much of a playable area for this to be viable for the course, so I don't care enough to make one. What's a map editor? A tool used for making maps instead of having to do what I'm doing here. coordinates I need. Last one, 6340.381. 
would sound like more. I mean, no, the basic principle would just be like you can just click two points and then like I just it just measures where the you just because I can track where the mouse is. So when I click, it makes one end of a wall, and then when I click again, it makes the other end of the wall. And then you just type in where you want the bottom and top of the wall to be, and then it can run a simple calculation, which wouldn't take me too long to make. And then the floors, I could just make like a drag and click thing, and then I assign where the height is, and then. Oh my god, that would have been so much easier to make. I... Yeah, there's literally no time for it anymore, but uh, that would have been so much better if I would actually thought about how to put it into practice earlier in development. Oh well, live and learn I guess. Sorry for making me realise something. No, it's fine. It's fine. I've been, I've been regretting my commitment to this idea for weeks now. So I did have no idea how to actually implement it and how, because I then have to also make a system to get it to, like export the created maps and then save them in some way which would be the difficult part because I don't know how to use any external file management with JavaScript. There's why I didn't do it. Anyway, did I write these numbers in? No, I didn't. I, well, I've never worked with that and never considered it, so maybe it would be. Seems correct. Nice. Hmm. Yeah. The thing is, I just have no idea how I'd be able to store something in an external file that would be able to be. I mean, I suppose I could make a lengthy thing where it compiles the external files data into the correct object formats. But it, it could be possible. Maybe if I do decide to continue working on this project after when it's do for what I originally started it for I might consider that although there are other things I'd like to do once this is done because it's taken up the last like half a year of my life and I'm kind of getting bored of it but anyway yeah back back to work <laughs> uh, next up another floor slightly further down and have I sunk into the floor I feel like I've I feel like I'm really close to the floor. Where you 
workers just don't don't measure, just throw. Yeah, that works for a lot of things. Just this, I've got to measure things so there isn't gaps in the world. No, you're wrong. That's absolutely how I, how my approach to doing my calculations and stuff works. Like, where's something? Let's just. Skylar, welcome back. Oh, yeah. When in doubt, just yeet shit until it works. Like, all these uh, movement controls, I basically just did every combination of plus and minus, sine and cosine, until I got them in the right orders, and then I settled on it once I found the right ones. JavaScript looks like hell. It's probably just because of my um, hellish colour scheme, but it can be. Actually, hold on. I will show you the most hellish thing here. It's in my AI for path for enemy pathfinding. Find path, I believe. No, not that one. Is it while path found equals zero. Yep, here it is. A for loop inside a for loop inside a for loop inside a for loop inside a while loop. Unity is poggies. I imagine it is for people who are allowed to use a game engine for their games. I'm not though, so. Anyway, I don't like looking at this because I don't remember exactly how it works. Too much looping yeah it kind of is but I think what it does is so I have a format for how they like work they make a tree of all so I have uh, I have a grid of pathfinding nodes and then basically the AI orders those into a tree and then it finds the basically it finds the one closest to itself then everyone connects to that goes to the next level of the tree and then so on and so forth until it finds the one that's closest to its destination then that one it then works up the tree figuring out which thing it was connected to on the previous level and then basically it does that makes sure the path is valid and then it compiles that into a list of points for the AI to travel through to get to its goal so it's got a long list of for loops because it's got to check backwards through several layers of things which are basically like a th three dimensional array that it's got to double check My teacher. Oh no, I fully decided to do this with my own accord. Most people just make like basic, like top down games with a simple grid. And yes, I do have an exam as well. So, what your future looks like? Probably doesn't because Unity has tools for making this sort of thing easier. I'm a masochist? Yes, I am. Actually, no, I'm not. I just. I like making. I like making systems. What's the word? I like making game mechanics. And I'm about to go on a tangent and... No, I'm not. I was going to say I've built something like this. I built something like this before on a simpler system, which I just adapted for this. But, like, actually, I'm not going to do that because I'm working on this. 
Is it good or bad that I'm getting distracted by explaining my code? Brains already going boom. And I'll just show you how much this this class, just the artificial intelligence, takes up a total of three hundred lines currently for finding paths. Then there's this check after it moves to see if it's in range of the player so it can switch to hostile mode or no it can switch to melee mode then there's the following its path where it calculates the angle it needs to move at then it yeah it calculates the angle that it needs to move at then it moves in that direction or it round or it snaps onto the next position if it's close enough and then here it checks if it can ignore the path and make a straight line to the player and then here it just basically like optimizes it so it can like doesn't have to go through every note actually hang on i might have somewhere like on my github i think i have like a top down view of how the ai works recast test can i how do i see Old versions. Yes, good. Pathfinder. Test. Oh, thank God, main still has it. Let's just. Uh, how do I download this shit? Let's just make a new file on my desktop. Are you doing baby steps on your first game? Baby steps is where everything's got to start. New text file. Uh, Index.html. Yes, I want to change it. Open with. How do I. Ugh. Let me open it with the text editor. There we go, notepad. Save that and get the... I really hope this works. Copy that. Make a new text file. Script.js Then I don't remember the shit. Um, no, it will be. Uh, hold on. I won't. Oh, it says a place there. I am so glad that this has incredibly bad location data. Nope. Slash index.html. There we go. Here is just a simple AI running the pathfinding script. I believe it's currently not drawing the path. Yep, hold on. Here it is, yeah, here's the green lines are the pathfinding grid 
it uses a line between these nodes then after it's found that it figures out every frame if it can just like sort of not bother with using them hence how sometimes it just sort of goes straight past the corners sorry I like talking about this I'm really proud of this system because it's like a it's like an inefficient pathfinding system called breath breadth first search which I, I haven't added weight to the lines but like it, so it's inefficient, but it also knows how to ignore some of its own inefficiencies. How do I write it? Bread, bread, breads. Hold on. Bread first search. I mean, actually you could say it's bread first search because you know I'm bread and the algorithm is designed to search for me and yeah that's how you spell it how do I zoom in breadth I've got to figure out how to zoom out again. Don't think you'd be doing research on a holiday. Who would? Anyway, this is not what I'm working on. Ah, god damn it, everything's messed up now. Okay, we're going to doop, 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 doop. This is only where your life's going if you don't use something like Unity, which has tools for making these things easier. So I'm just going to very quickly whip up a... You know, text your lecture at 3 a.m. Go for it. Just tell them a random person on the internet has inspired you to make the most horrendous and avoidable algorithm to build ever. I don't. I lost where that sentence was going halfway through. Oh yeah, I was going to make a wider version of the gravel texture, so this doesn't look as stupid. You can't see it because I haven't set this up to capture my paint app. Learning the basic pasta stuff is a good way to understand. Yeah, that is a good way to learn, but obviously you shouldn't say you got any inspiration from me because I as you pointed out earlier, I'm kind of a masochist. I choose to do things the awkward way. <laughs> Let's make this... Um Five, no, ten times as wide. Three hundred, no, three thousand. learning pipette assembly yeah fuck no this this is the it's 2022 no one needs to learn assembler 
anymore. It's like, I mean, yeah, learning assembly language is cool. For my, okay, for a different one of my A-level coursework, I did have to learn an assembler code for a because I do electronics where there's you've, there's a module on learning a specific microcontroller which you haven't have, have to program in a type of assembler code. I chose to do an overly complicated project in that as well. So I do know an ex, I know well I know the exam board this version of assembler code for that specific chip. Is this is a level one yet? No, they're two year courses actually. And if we want to go further, I'm also writing my own assembler style language to be in that I'm also going to write an interpreter for for an Arduino Nano because I am building myself a small game console and I'm going to give some to my friends as well and it's going to be awesome because I'm, I'm making a game console that you is going to be able to read games from an external SD card like old like DS's and stuff. Anyway, I'm putting myself through hell for no reason. I just did a sarcastic thumbs up, but you guys can't see it because I'm not a real human. Now I can add in the new... Well, we can collapse this as well now, because I'm not looking at that anymore, ever. Sprite sheets and images, okay. Stone, gravel, let wide gravel. Preload, walls and floors. Wide gravel equals load image. Uh -huh. and now we just change all these walls to use wide gravel. this hopefully they don't look as stupid now they kind of do because the texture is still tiny but I think it's funny so I'm leaving it thankfully the people who mark this never actually have to see the game they can just assume from the code that it looks good they, I'll just let them assume that all the textures actually fit their purpose. And right, yeah, new new floor. Oh, this one's not going to be rotated at all. Ah, oh, yes. Anyway, where's th uh, this position-ish? I need a button to get the player's coordinates. Did I spell floor right? Yes, I did. Width one is going to be like a thousand. That's ten thousand. That's a thousand. If that's one, if that's one thousand eight hundred. Uh, let's go one thousand eight hundred again and hope it's good. X is pff, not a clue. And that's seven thousand. I'll say seven thousand five hundred. 
and negative 250 and Z of 2700 and rotation of zero and texture of gravel and squeals boop comma save refresh music please come back I was listening to you Oh, it's there. Okay, that is just like way off on the x axis. X axis. No, it's not the x axis that it's off on. It's, it's the z axis. I know my axes. Oh, because I put a 3 instead of a 2. That makes sense. Anyway, oh my god, I've already been doing this for an hour and a half, and this is all I've made. Like just these few steps. And I guess we'll just increase that by maybe a hundred. Wait. Okay, so we increase the other thing too, or just like move it over a bit. Okay, yeah, we just move it over a bit. I'll move it up so that's less X. 7,400. And then the floor, the, the boundaries. Just one more complicated one. And then we can have one very simple to make one as well, which will be nice. I love when it's simple to make. So let's get mathing. Ew, mathing. I don't like that word that I've just used. I'm going to not use it again. So the position is 600, 1,800. No, that's not right. 7,000, 2,200. Uh, 300. 900 and then what's the rotation on this? 30, okay. So cos negative 30, sine negative 30, negative sine negative 30. Love maths, but I made it hell. Yes I did. Luckily, there's nothing more than a simple matrix multiplication that I've ever got to do for finding where the corners of walls are. And then I've got to go back over it, figure out a safe point on every floor tile where I can put the pathfinding node, because um, over steps like these there needs to be a pathfinding node at every level otherwise AIs will sort of freak out because there's walls in the way so I've got to actually that's easy I just sort of get it to log the player's position and then I just stand there write that down anyway these are just simple things did I finish doing this? Negative sine negative 30 and cosine of negative 30. Now I do A plus CB, which seem hard to learn. Do you want a lesson in matrices? I can, I can do a lesson in matrix multiplication. <laughs> Really? I I will stop if you actually want. Oh, okay, cool, nice. Sure, I need I need something to distract me from 
the tedium of this. Actually, can I just write in these values before I forget? <laughs> X1, 6809.808. Don't have to ask me. Oh yeah, good point. This is my stream. I can do what I want. And please don't talk without raising your hand. I'm joking. I'm not going to pretend I'm actually a fucking teacher. I don't know. I don't want to do that. 3129.423. Yo. Hopefully that is enough of a reminder for future me. Capture, there we go. New um Okay, here we go. First Doom code. <laughs> Second, well, they were built in the same engine, so there's not much difference. Welcome to matrices. I really should be using something other than paint.net for this, but I don't have something other than paint.net. Uh, I also don't have a drawing tablet, so I'm doing this all with my mouse. X. Why? This is a matrix. Well, actually, this is a vector, but it takes the format of a matrix, so we're going to call it a matrix. I'm not going to overcomplicate things with vectors. <laughs> Sorry, I, I'm not a good teacher. Anyway, yeah, this is a matrix. Oh, the fly. <laughs> um, what you can do to a matrix is anything you can do to numbers. You can add it to another matrix of the same dimensions adding only works when they have the same amount of columns and rows okay you got that no i need i need that second one back multiplication um Hold on, if I just move this over here. Has some strange things how it works. So if I were to go... Say that mate, let's go X1 again and Y1. There's a fly in my room and it's really bothering me. These cannot be multiplied together because that's not how matrices work and now time to figure out how they actually do I kind of get it but I've been a while since I've explained it to someone um, this is a one by two matrix and this over here is a two by don't we don't talk about divisions because I don't understand divisions either I just need to make sure I've actually got these the right way around Okay, my keyboard sounds nice, thank you. It is literally just a standard Dell keyboard, it's like a, like an a desktop keyboard with it's it's not an, it's not a nice keyboard. <laughs> it's just it's literally just the one that came free with my PC. Anyway, anyway, these ones 
how you work out the dimension of what a... Uh, hang on. Okay, yes. Two matrices can be multiplied if the... Hang on, if the the amount of columns the first one has, so this one this one has two columns, this one has one column, they can be multiplied if the first one's columns is the same as the second one's rows. And to know what the dimensions of the product will be, it is the first one's rows times the second one's columns. So this will produce a one by one matrix. which will be I believe it will be x1 x plus y1 1 or y1 times y Hang on. yes that is correct yep x1 times x plus y1 times y because I'll just switch to red for this you take well, the principle is across the first one times down the second one so it will be the one in the first first row first column times first row first column then first row second column times first column second row on the second one and then you would add those two results together now I just need to blank this out again because it isn't, they don't need to just be uh, transposed dimensions. Oh, I missed transposition, hold on. Transposition is a basic thing where you just, that's still way too thick. Hang on, can you, I think you have to, I think you can only transpose square, ve square matrices. Okay. Uh, transposing a matrix is where you basically just sort of flip everything across this line here. So the anything where it's column and row are the same stays the same, but Y would then be moved to this position here, and it would become a two by one matrix of x no there's not a comma there i'm so used to coordinates <laughs> x y boom transposition then you can transpose that back and it will become this again now let's just see a new multiplication that's the thing okay Seems to be, it is simple. You just you just flip something around the around the prime diagonal. I don't think that's the the leading diagonal is what it's called. Now, class, here is another matrix multiplication. I want you to tell me: is this multiplication possible? Yes or no? Remember what we learnt like five minutes ago? No, correct. Because this one has one column and this one has two rows. Meaning they're not compatible. But if we were to go like this. That barely fits. <laughs> Oh, 
Oh, for God's sake. You have to do it. That's, that's, I, it's always good when I accidentally let someone say that. Anyway, this matrix multiplication is possible because the columns of this, no, the amount of row, bleh, no, the amount of columns this one has lines up with the amount of rows this one has. And what it equals is, remember the rule? Hold on, I'm just going to switch to a different colour again. Across the first one and down the second one. So what it equals is, I'm going to have to do this in text. That's very big text, hold on. Equals AX plus by on the top and then cx plus dy plus dy on the bottom does that make sense even if it's bigger yes and we could this one uh, this matrix, let's just call it one for a moment. This can have as many columns as it want, as long as it has the same amount of rows. It will be compatible to multiply with our x, y here. Anything else you want to know about matrices? Oh, you can also just a much easier concept is scalar multiplying where you'd just be like times three equals each you times each thing inside by the by the factor there so it'll just be 3a 3b 3c 3d if the second matrix would oh shit hold on Now, if the second matrix here were two columns, that would make it a... This one is currently two by two, and this one is currently two by one. So... Hang on, have I... I've forgotten how this works. You do, and is it rows first, then columns? Yes, the amount of rows first. So, no, the columns could still be expanded to two. Let's make this. Let's. Oh, God. Let's make this two by two. Oh, God, I cannot control this thing. Brush, um, XY. Let's make this XY and Z. Oh, my God, I want to go back to red. X, Y, Z. Pro tips on paint as well. Yep. I just use this because it's free. This would still be compatible. It would make a 2D. No. It would make a 2. It would make another 2x2 two because two, the insides are still the same. Oh, wait. No, hold on. Uh, the first. What I said earlier is wrong. This one you couldn't add more across. You'd ha you'd only you couldn't add more in that direction if you were multiplying it by the thing other thing because then there would be too many columns and you'd basically anything that went here wouldn't have anything to multiply. This this one can have more rows. This one can have more columns. But now what we've created is a fucking ugly thing where the first the first term here will be AX plus BY then the second then the top 
right term will be AZ plus BW because basically you take the across and the down and where they intersect actually hang on, can I just get a highlight? How do I do a highlighter? Green. That's way too pale. <laughs> basically A, B and X, Y they overlap in the position 1, 1 so AX plus BY will go to position 1, 1 and then A, B and Z, W overlining the position where B and Z are so it goes there and then on the second row it will be because now the CD line and the XY line intersect in the place where C and Y are you will times that row by that and put it here so it will be CX plus DY and then the final thing in the other corner will just be the things you haven't multiplied S no CZ plus DW and you don't put the commas in I'm just doing it to make it clear there you go I'm just going to have a look at what's the determinant of a matrix. And what I was using matrices for is basically you can use them to calculate the rotation or where a point would be if you rotated it by a certain amount. You can just search uh, rotation matrix into Google, it's this here. You times a set of coordinates by that and that's what would happen if you... and you'd be able to find out how far around the point zero zero it's rotated. Oh god, hang on, I've lost everything. <laughs> ah, ah, there, there we go. <laughs> Must be... Where's the tan? Oh, there's, there's no tan f for that. It's yeah. No, you don't. You don't need tangent for that. And actually, if we just go, I don't think it's in here either. Yeah, no, that it doesn't come into play in that. But. Tangent is still useful for a lot of other things in stuff. But sadly, that is all we have time for today, class. So, uh, thank you for coming to my lect lecture, basically, this turned into. Um, yeah, I'm out of time, sorry. It's like 10 pm. I gotta go to sleep. So, thank you all for watching. I love you very, very much. I'm going to get this text out of my face. Whoop. Please follow if you haven't already. Subscribe if you're watching this on YouTube. Take a screenshot of my work. Um, wh yeah, sure. sure uh, go back in the VOD once I've finished and screenshot whatever you want. Uh, I'm trying to do my outro right now. Uh, yeah, follow if you haven't already. Subscribe if you want. Yeah. Uh, yep, yeah, follow if you haven't already. Join the Discord for all sorts of community stuff. Love you all. See you tomorrow, I think. Bye. God, I still feel, feel weird when I'm not able to wave goodbye to you all because I don't have hand tracking. Anyway, love you all. See you around. <laughs>